bring in the Louis Vuitton Don. The Louis Vuitton Don. Our man, Mark Jones. Mark, I'm happy college basketball's wrapped up, man. We missed you on the call. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, I'll, I'll be back. This is a TNT exclusive tonight, so we, we don't get a chance to call it, Katie and I, but um, I'll be on it tomorrow against the Clippers. And uh, first things first, man, tonight's going to be fun. Tonight's yeah. going to be fun. And college football's over for me until I got one last bowl game coming up in late December, and that's it. And is I'm, it the Pop like, Tart Bowl? Is that? Is that? The, <laughs> hey, I was hoping for the Popeyes Chicken Bowl. You know what I mean? Oh, oh man, like, Oh man, just perpetuating stereotypes. <laughs> My boy, Mark. I need that. I need to go to that one too. Down in the bayou somewhere. I need to be there too. I don't need any flowers. We get nowhere. We, we, uh, bowl, I got enough orange. I don't need any of that. Send me down oh, to the bayou. Man. Send me down yeah. to the bayou for that Popeye's chicken bowl. I need that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, real quick, well, while, while we while we have Mark here, real quick, we're talking King. We're gonna really talk King. I just want to ask him, college football. You know, I'm a Michigan fan. They're right. pretty much destined for the playoffs. Gotta I think be. they're going all the way, Mark. I think it's a done deal. My boys are getting it done finally. They they look like they have all the elements now, man. Um, you know, I, I think this might be their time, and you know, they've gone through all the adversity with you know Coach Harbaugh having to sit out those games and and weathered it really well. You know, I don't, I don't see the Big Ten championship game being a problem for them at all. It's just a matter of maintaining their health through that game. Mm. You know, we see how quickly these things can turn, man. Look at yeah. Florida State and quarterback Jordan Travis. What happened to them? You know, they were entrenched in the ACC, and that was pretty much a gift for them to be able to finish in the top four in the college football playoff. But one play and a catastrophic injury, and, you know, now, now they're out of the picture. Mm. So we'll see, man. We'll see. Hey, uh, Mark, can you ever remember a time where the national champions head coach was suspended for half the season? Why are we bringing this up? Why are we talking? We're talking about the games on the field. I'm on Mark's expertise as a college football play-by-play analyst. We're talking about the games on the field. I'm going to start crying because it's getting getting upsetting. A lot of programs went on probation after the coach. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, this is a first. (laughs) Hey, man, yeah, you got to get probation three-year probation after they win but <laughs> yeah man uh, this is different this is different but you know say what you want about coach harbaugh man he's got that infrastructure set up there with his coordinators and they're, they're they showed that they've been on pretty much autopilot be able to do it without him you know right. his players love yeah. him man that's Dude, what matters impressive oc that should have a head coaching job somewhere well stop somewhere. crying that's well, that's what he, i he stop will stop crying at these damn yeah. he will he's yeah. gonna be a coach of michigan next year <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he about to have his job because <laughs> Harbaugh gone. <laughs> hey, Harbaugh, Harbaugh gonna be Harbaugh end up in the NFL sometimes. Yeah, he go he on his way. Yeah, Mark Mark gonna be <laughs> yeah. running into Harbaugh in Chicago next year when the Kings play the Bulls. <laughs> right. How about that? Yeah, hey, hey, coach. yeah I, I can see that. I can see that, man. I can see that. Uh, let's talk Kings basketball, man. This is Mark. This feels like a huge game. Mm. This feels like a huge game for the Kings. It's a huge game for Kings fans. We're all on edge and it's not because a spot in the knockout round of the in season tournament is on the line. It's the fact that a spot in the knockout round in the in season tournament is on the line against the Warriors. It's always the goddamn Warriors, Mark. (laughs) I know, man. I know. They like, you know, they're like the family member, that uncle that keeps showing up and, you know, can't get rid of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't invite $1, you. <laughs> he leaves for a little bit, comes back in two weeks. Hey, can you hook me up? And, like, <laughs> yeah, they just won't leave. And, and that first game between them, I remember how, you know, it appeared as if, you know, the, the Kings had finally broken through at Golden State in San Francisco at Chase Center. And mm. Sabonis had that nice midi and, and put put us up. And then... Clay comes back with that last second pull up uh, uh, 15 footer that pretty much won the game for them. That was mm-hmm. without De'Aaron, you know. Um, but this is going to be a little bit different tonight, you know. No Keegan. Uh, I, I love the fact that this is a great test uh, for us with respect to you know how do we respond in in big situations. It's a great opportunity to get you know high intensity, high focus basketball in November 
for Sacramento. So, you know, Mike Brown gets a chance to, you know, fine tune some of those uh, situations, you know, instead of just talking about it, Hey, last year he was talking about saying, Hey, when we get to the playoffs, when we get to the playoffs all season long, now you've got a scenario where you can treat a regular season game like a playoff game. And that's only going to benefit Sacramento down the road. And the fact that we're three and all going into this game speaks volumes about, you know, what they've done so far this year and being able to survive and play as well as, as we have without De'Aaron for those five games, those two weeks. And you look at the balance of home versus road games, man, to think about where we are right now, having played only a handful, having played almost twice as many road games Mm. as home games speaks a lot to the team's discipline and, and focus right now. And, you know, my eyes tonight are going to be on the Sabonis, uh, Looney matchup, amongst other things. I, I think, you know, De'Aaron always goes out and gets his 30. That's the way he's playing right now. And I'd love to see his 37.3 point percentage continue. But uh, it, I, I love the chess match that's going to happen tonight between these two teams. Yeah. Now, and, and I don't want to I don't want to breeze past that, Mark, because, Mark, you said it a, a, a couple of months ago. And we ain't naming no names because that's that's your that's your partner. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. But some people scoffed at it. Some people said you were being a homer. And look they who did. is balling out. Because you said it. You said a long time ago, De'Aaron Fox is gonna have an MVP like season. And they look did. at what hey, he's man, doing, know, man. You see what he's doing. Hey man, I know some people are slow. They had to stay after school, you know, in elementary <laughs> school. I had to stay a couple of times too. You know what I mean? But <laughs> I try telling him <laughs> he is going to be a top five MVP candidate. And, you know, uh, you look at his three point numbers, 37%. You look at his efficiency, he's hovering right around 50%, uh, scoring at all three levels. And, you know, the one thing about, uh, I love about De'Aaron's game right now is that he and Mike Brown are in such great sync together now. And, mm. you know, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, they talked about it much on the, previous broadcast but in the last game and you know Mike has evolved our offense in Sacramento to the point where it's starting to gain a little bit more steam and he hasn't shown his entire hand right up front now there was one set that Mike ran and spanned it over and over and over with the Aaron in the ball game it was kind of a horn set had the two bigs the four and five up high setting a ball screen and JaVale McGee was rolling to the basket hard. The other big was popping out. That's the play that we haven't seen a lot uh, throughout the years or even last year. Um, And he kind of unveiled it in that last game and in Minnesota and it worked. And that really shows that, you know, De'Aaron, Mike, Jay Triano, who runs the offense, this team is constantly looking for that edge and finding that edge. And that win in Minnesota was a big one and it speaks to the the ceiling of this team that I think that you know the ceiling's a lot higher than most other people think and and De'Aaron of course is the catalyst for all of that man he's he's driving the train and mm-hmm. his leadership you know he he's been on black air force energy times this year <laughs> without people even knowing yeah. <laughs> you know you sit court side I've heard I've heard I love this about De'Aaron he's competitive man he'll mm. You know, he'll use some words that, you know, mom might not like, but (laughs) he'll get to his opponents and his teammates and get his point across. And and that's part of leadership. And, you know, that's another part where he's he's growing. Shout out to the Lakers broadcast who picked up a couple of those words. (laughs) (laughs) They had the boom mics out there. They got every word. (laughs) <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, hey, man. Uh, like fired up the Aaron Fox out there on the court tonight. Exactly, exactly. Hey, some of us are we were hurt before we were good. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's yeah. Dave County Mark yeah. talking right yeah, there. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. do uh how do they get over this hump, man? It, it, it's the, the Warriors are constantly in the way of Sacramento winning something. Mm. They are again tonight. Tonight could be a step, but what do they have to do to to put this Warriors thing behind them for the time being? Man, I, I think, um, you know, prevent offensive rebounds, A, and, you know, because that really hurts Sacramento if you look at some of the pivotal moments in the playoffs last year. Offensive rebounding and continue to keep the Warriors out of the paint, the 30th in the NBA in paint points. And if they can force, Steph to do all the heavy lifting 
from outside and, and try and, you know, do your best to limit him, whatever that means. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that, that, that'll dictate a lot. That'll be a barometer for the King's success tonight. And, you know, offensively, uh, without Keegan, um, you know, they're going to lose a little bit of perimeter shooting, but, uh, I, I look for just tempo and pace and tempo and pace because I don't think that Golden State has the ability to keep up with Sacramento in a, in a fast-paced game. You know, when you look at, you know, Chris Paul coming in, leading that second unit, um, Sacramento's bench, I think, has an edge in terms of pace, which will be a big determinant. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I don't know how it's going to play out for – um, the the rest of the season. But I know right now the Kings are, are playing better basketball than the Warriors right now. And if you're the Kings, you want to take advantage of that. You know, you want to take advantage of where you're at as a team and maybe they don't have all their things together. So that, and that actually, Mark and Damon, that actually would, it would adds to the angst of tonight because you are a better team right now. You are playing better. And if they find a way again in this scenario to beat you, uh, I know. it's going to be tough to swallow. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, and you know what's tricky about it? After, you know, an 11-day, 11 11-day, 11 six-game road trip, that first game at home, I don't care, even though we've had a couple of days off to practice and get reacclimated to being back at the crib, that first game at home is always a little dangerous, man. It's always still feeling a little bit like a road game. So therein lies a little bit of danger for Sacramento. But, um, you know, I, I think there's a great chance to – take care of business. And um, I, I love watching Steve Kerr and Mike Brown go head to head because, you know, each team knows each other's playbook and um, they're constantly tweaking. And, you know, it, it comes down to just who makes the plays tonight when it counts. And I love the fact that there's so much on the line, you mm-hmm. know, between these two squads and, you know, <laughs> I'm just wondering what the over under is on, on Draymond's first technical, what time it comes, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> Man, <laughs> does, does he make it through the whole game? <laughs> it's 50 50. I love it though. He's he, he gonna hear it tonight. That. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. gonna hear it tonight. That's for sure. Yeah, That's for sure. yeah. And we're getting we're getting Golden State at a good time though, man, because you know, they're still you know, Clay's a little bit off, he's only shooting 40%. You know, Andrew Wiggins is still trying to find his way, uh, he's only hitting 25% of his three point shots, and they're not exactly trending in the right direction. So mm. And nobody in Sacramento is going to feel sorry for Golden State, but we're getting them at a really good time. Well, and no one's going to be comfortable heading into that seven o'clock start time with what you just said. Either. No, because yeah. <laughs> every Kings yeah. fan is thinking, oh, great. They're going to turn it around yeah. against us tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I want to see how, you know, Trey Lyle's coming back now and how mm-hmm. how he impacts things. I, I know that, you know, we can have a lot of success using him at stretch five or you know, play him and JaVale at the same time when Sabonis is out of the ball game. Those winning those non Sabonis and those non Fox minutes are always going to be clutch for Sacramento, right? And uh, I think they're more than equipped for it right now against Golden State. For sure, for sure. Mark, before we get out of here, man, we know you you got a busy, you're back home. You finally got some time to yourself. So, you know, we appreciate you uh, taking some time to talk to us. But I wanted to make sure that. You told the lovely Sophia Jones, D'Lo and KC said, congratulations and welcome back. We saw she got was able to get back out there on the court over the weekend, man, and that was great to see. So welcome back, Sophia. Man, my brothers, thank you very much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. I I was at the game last night, her first one in 14 months after mm-hmm. ACL and meniscus surgery, and uh been a lot of tears for her, man. A lot of hard, hard conversations about being able to break through, and um, and she made it, man. Like sometimes your kids inspire you in ways that you don't even imagine. And she came into the game in the fourth quarter and um, came off that screen and hit that fifteen foot pull up. And I'm I'm not too proud to say I lost it, man. I was I was in tears. Man. It was it was a moment. Yeah. It's something I'll never forget. Like think about all that she's been through to get back on the court after two ACLs. And, um, you know, it makes it easier for me to get up and get off my ass and, and work out when I don't feel like it. <laughs> uh, and she's you tougher know, than a $2 yeah. steak, Mark. She's tougher than a $2 hey, steak. You know, to see it, that. <laughs> you know it, man. And I'll, I'll pass your sentiments along. I appreciate you guys. And I know that she does too. She'll say she'll, she feels that way too. Thanks. 
Absolutely. Thanks. Brother, we appreciate you. Thanks for carving out some time for us. And I uh, can't wait to hear you back on the call and, and, and see you hopefully tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be at the gym tomorrow, man. Nice so, and early. Getting ready. Yes, sir. This Pre- is a fun time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we appreciate you, Mark. Thank Take you, care, brother. Mark.